So right now I'm working with Dr. Egan J. Chernoff and I'm working with Sandra Hall, another PhD student. Um, and what we're doing right now is we're trying to revamp some old math problems um, into turning them into modern day 21st century vernacular pretty much. So what happened was is uh, I got asked a question by Dr. Chernoff about, um, you know, Mr. Jones has two children and the eldest is a girl. What's the chances both are girls? And I said, and I had to pause for a second when I saw that question. I said, well, I know what you want me to answer. I know that the traditional answer would be a half boy or girl, but with my experience as a teacher and a gay straight alliance teacher, I was like, wait a minute, but the answer isn't a half. It's not that simple anymore. Now we also have non-binary. So actually the answer should be a third. This is the conversations I've had with students, with parents, with faculty members, with so many people about how to include our gender and sexually diverse students. And yet, I never really thought about the way we're answering your questions at the lens perspective. So then I delved into the research, what is there out there to help our students and found actually there's very little to help our students with this. So there's little research in it. So it kind of made me go, well, I want to make research. I want to do this research because if there is a little bit of a lack, I can make it not a lack and work with others so that they're making it less of a lack. So I really just want to build this concept. Queer theory isn't really interesting because it actually came from gay liberationists um, and then you had feminine, um, you had lesbian feminists who came right because they had two different cultures growing up really if you were a lesbian or gay it's very different and then queer theory kind of amalgamated both of those into a gender neutral type of theory which is to say we need to rethink the way we think we need to rethink about heteronormativity we need to rethink about cis normativity not using those words at the time those might not have been the words used but for modern day and so queer theory comes in to say we need to rethink this because we need to represent people better and we need to rethink what we think is the normal and so that's kind of where it comes and I think it's really important because we have students who are in the 2SLGBTQ plus community who aren't seeing themselves represented and I feel like math class like in general math class is ooh math class and first of all we need to change that but second of all we need people to see themselves in math and so this is a great way to do it so I was a math and science teacher before I came here and so I would really try to encourage students to go into STEM but you I've actually had students come up to me and be like well I'm queer so I don't need to do math because I don't need to go into STEM and it's like, no, there's so many great STEM people uh, who are in the 2SLGBTQ plus community, but they're not seeing themselves represented. Um, so in terms of that, social justice covers every topic. It covers um, indigenous, it covers racism. And so one topic that I was seeing was being missed, um, not purposefully, just being missed, was our 2SLGBTQ plus community or our gender and sexual diverse students. So that's where I really want to put some emphasis. It's just somewhere I find is a little less uh, talked about. So one thing I want to see is something that I wasn't doing as much as the teacher until I was really thinking about it as a gay straight alliance teacher was um, we're doing this on a very individual basis. I find that teachers here and there are including our gender and sexually diverse students and concepts and culture into our math classes, uh, but it's not really being done like on a systemic level where we really try to integrate them really, really well. Um, there are a couple really interesting projects that are out. So the RISE project is out, which covers the curriculum in Saskatchewan and BC and others. So there's programs like that, but it's the implementation of those programs that I really want to concentrate on and trying to help teachers and educators figure out like, how do you do that when you're maybe an ally or you don't know the community as well and things like that. So really trying to make it more a common place than it is right now. So in general, the biggest thing is just showing your students that you're willing to have those conversations. Um, as teachers, we kind of know that um, our plans don't always go to plan. And what's really important is if a student does bring up a topic or something to actually discuss the conversation. And if you're not, uh, confident in your answers, you can always ask your students because your students know a lot too. But it's even asking your students or saying, hey, let's talk about this, but if I don't know, let's research this a bit more later and have the conversation later. You're opening the doors up. And I think that's a big thing is to make sure we're opening these doors and these conversations up as educators in general, um, and especially in any classroom. I've seen a lot of students talk about this topic because of course, when I introduce myself, I'm like, hey, I'm queerifying math. And it's, there's an enthusiasm just hearing this someone's doing that and for me the enthusiasm has been wonderful just because it's showing that people understand the value of this and they want to learn to do it as well um, and so while I'm learning I get to learn with them and so building all that rapport has been wonderful so honestly there's a lot being done um, in terms of our students and the students that we get here as pre-service teachers.